Hello, it's Duncan. This week we're back in our test-driven Gilded Rose code base. For those of you who've only started watching recently, this is an implementation of a stock control system from Magical Goods Store, using Kotlin in a largely functional style, and developed iteratively over 100 episodes so far. Key technologies are Postgres via Duke and HTMX via HTTP4K. It's been a year since we added any core functionality to the application, the ability to add a new item to stock. The system has continued to function reliably since then, but apart from updating versions of Kotlin and libraries, we haven't added any more features because Alison, the shop owner, would rather spend her money on cruises than developers. She'd also like to make more money though, and now she's persuaded this internet thing is not a fad, she would like to explore selling online. So, we've rehired. The system is production quality code, and as with most code bases, we've taken on some technical debt in order to make more rapid progress. In particular, we didn't get around to removing a feature flag that controls whether or not new item functionality is shown in the UI. Now seems like a good time to do that, so let's do that. In fact, let's do it twice. Once the old fangled using refactoring tools way, and then again the new fashioned AI assistant way. Okay, that just seems to have gone loopy. So here we are with the Gilded Rose user interface and pretty much the last thing we actually did here was to add this new item row. So we can specify an ID and a name, magical banana, specify the sell by date of, I don't know what, my birthday and give it a current quality. If we add that, then lo and behold, magical banana will appear down the bottom. We don't yet sort this table in any particular order. Now then, we'd hidden the existence of this feature behind a feature flag, so that until it was working, we didn't show it to Alison, our customer. So let's have a look in the code base for where we did that. Here is our features class, and you can see it's got one property, new item enabled. And I think the last thing we did as part of shipping this feature was to default it to true. Let's have a look and see whether it's false anywhere. So we create it here with true, true, and true. So in fact, everywhere in the code base, the value of this is true which suggests that we can get rid of it. We can't just do that completely though, because it's used here, it's fetched in our stock list rendering. Let's have a look. And the value of features new item enabled is put into this stock list view model, show new item row there. So I think the simplest thing we can do, knowing that this features new item enabled is always true, is just replace this with true, like that. And then run all of the tests. That's good, and we know that those tests actually test the rendering, but we've also got some browser tests. Let's find them, which run and play right and a browser. Uh, there it is, and they seem happy as well. Good. So now we sort of started in the middle here because new item row is pushed down and pulled from the features up above. I think before we remove it from the features up above, let's go down we know that it's used as show new item row in the stock list view model here. So that begs the question, what refers to that? Let's find out. And as far as IntelliJ is concerned, that's the only place in the project. So maybe in fact, we could just delete that property. So we could take it out of here and also here and run our tests again. Ah, but something fails. Let's have a look what. And here you can see the answer is our stock list rendering tests. They are failing. Two of them, list stock, and we can see what we got. And here you can see what we expected, which was that we have a little form at the top with a post to add item, that that's not there now. And also, in fact, the entire table row isn't there. So I think IntelliJ was wrong. That property was used. Let's go back and work out how. So I'm going to undo in this file, just check the test do actually pass now. Good. And in these cases, it's normally that we have something called this somewhere that IntelliJ hasn't seen. So now we're going to search for that everywhere. It's in our stock list rendering as we expect, but it's also here in our handlebars template. And in fact, that's the place we were failing, isn't it? Okay, well, we know that in practice this is always true, so we can probably just change that to true there and true there. 
And now if we redo that search, we should only have the ones in the code. And let's run and see what happens. OK, good, our rendering works. So we've pushed our change down one. And now we have true in the template files. We should just be able to get rid of that and that. Wonderful. Now we could leave the if true in the template, but that seems a bit of a shame. Just going to find that file. I guess it'll be one of the changes here. There it is. So let's open that. And now we should be able to replace this if true here. And it's got these horrible handlebar -y things here. But it's this if and this end if bit here at the end here. So I should be able to get rid of that. And that. And there's another one here, if true. And where's the end of that? There it is. So we get rid of that one and that one. And run. Ah, and that's failed again. Let's have a look. And this is a problem with template rendering that white space sort of end up scattered around the place. It looks here like we had approved file with some white space at the beginning that's not there anymore. And we had an approved file with some white space, a blank line here that's not there anymore. Well, that seems fine to me. It's not going to change the output. In fact, if anything, it's a bit better. And we have the same thing here. Let's just check. So we'll look at the diff here. Oh, and there it is the same. Same problem when we're just rendering the table. So I think we should be able to approve this, which means the current version is the one that we want to see. Approve that. And now if we rerun the tests, everything is awesome. So we chase that change down the code. Let's have a look at up. You can see here IntelliJ is telling us that features is unused. Well, in that case, I think we can probably just safe delete it as a parameter and run the tests. That's all good. And now if we go back to our features and say, where is new item enabled used? The answer is it's only referenced where it's set to be true and it's defaulted to be true. So that's how we knew that it was always true. So I think we should be able to say safe delete this. And IntelliJ will let us know if there's any issues. And the answer is no. So if we run the tests, except that it turns out that it wasn't safe to delete because the data class must have at least one primary constructor parameter. It's a bit irritating, but we can say that we want a private val dummy to compile, which is a boolean equals true or false, who cares? And that should probably compile and works and passes the tests. Brilliant. I'm reasonably confident about that, but as I also have the browser tests, I think I'm going to run those. And I guess that's fine. So then let's check that in. We've made quite a few changes. Let's just see what they are. Here's removing the flag. Here's adding a dummy flag. This is removing the use of the features when we render. No flag, no features when we render and no show new item row in the stock list view model. The rendering tests no longer depend on features. We've changed the two approved files. We've changed the handlebars template and another place where we don't need to set new item enabled in the features. Splendid. So this can be remove features dot new item enabled flag. Good. IntelliJ says that I missed nine things. Let's have a look. One is HX swap is not allowed in our forms. Well, that's an HTMX thing and will be sorted out by JavaScript. We could ignore that. We still have context receivers in places that are now being deprecated. Mm -hmm, never mind. Same there. And ID is never used in a function that's used to populate our database for testing. I don't think I care about that much at all. OK, then I've rolled that back. Let's try the same thing with AI Assistant. So I've opened the features class to give it a clue. And I'm going to say I want to remove the new item enabled flag from features but keep the new item functionality. OK, that just seems to have gone loopy, starting with the fact that it showed me examples in Java. And 
public class features consider you have a class features.java well I have a class features here AI assistant and you don't seem to know anything about it I thought that AI assistant knew about open windows let's see if we can prompt it describe the Kotlin class features oh well that's better it's now actually found the thing we were talking about it says we've got a new item enable property tells me where it is and remembers that we were trying to remove the new item enabled flag so that's good it however just goes on to say adjust a new related code that checks this property to ensure the functionality is maintained would you like me to update the features class or help you search for code that uses the new item enabled property i want the second one so i'm going to say find code that uses the new item enabled property Okay, well, it seems to have only found the places that were setting it rather than getting it and removing the places initialized it is pretty easy. So I don't really want that. I'm going to say, no, please find the places that the property is red. Okay, so that's good. And it's actually suggesting here that I change show new item row to be true. So let's go ahead and do that by ourselves. It doesn't it's not really offering to do it for us, but I'm going to stop this rendering and I can take that step there now by saying that's true and run my tests. Good. I think I might say I have done that. How do I now tidy up? Well, thanks for telling me how to use Git, especially inside IntelliJ. Um, suggested commit message, marvellous. Uh, it's got the data class features, remove new item enabled property, and we know that won't compile. I wonder if I can ask it for a diff. Could I have a diff of those changes, please? Ah, that's the one I've done. Never mind. Let's say I need a diff for removing the property from features so we only seem to have removed it from the features not from the places that need it and it then goes on to tell me places where I should do the work hmm well let's just do that anyway I suppose we can go to features and I think we decided we could say safe delete it's gone, and we'll do our dummy thing to say private val dummy boolean false false. Check the things build. Okay, but we happen to know now that we still have this issue with show new item row. So I'm going to say I would also like to remove stock list view model dot show new item row. Doesn't look as if I need this one, I've already done it. But this is a diff to remove it, but we know that that will make things fail because of the rendering. What about usages of show new item row in handlebars templates? So it's showing an example if show new item row and it's showing us a thing in stocklist.hbs. It was very much like the change we actually need but isn't the change we actually need. So it's just telling us what we need to do but pretty much forcing us to do it ourselves. Let's see if opening the file will help. I think it should now be able to see it. I'm going to say here is stocklist model.hbs make the changes to that please um, that's just guessed it hasn't really tried at all has it I think I might force the issue by coming over here selecting the whole file say new chat using selection and say 
and remove the use of show new item row from the following handlebars template as if the value was always true. Sure. So let's say insert that over there and run our tests. They fail, but that may just be white space. Let's have a look. Certainly some white space issues, but I think probably it's kind of right. So let's go and fix up this by moving these in. <laughs> I suppose in some ways that is nicer than we had. What's the diff here? I think that had been left aligned. So I think I'm going to say approve that and approve that and run my tests. Good. Let's go and have a look at the diffs. So that's the change we expected. That's the change we made. Ah, that's a change we still need to make in order to remove the need for show new item row altogether. I think at this point I'm just going to do it myself. Are we still using features? We are, so we haven't got rid of that, but I can do that here as well, I think. That changes a bunch more things. Test or run. Good, and I just want to have a look at my handlebars template and I think it has done a good job. So I think we can say that with a bit of wheedling, we persuaded AI Assistant to make the changes that we made manually with IntelliJ sort of automatically. So what's the verdict then? Well, the manual refactoring wasn't hard. It flowed quite nicely and I ended up with confidence that I knew what I'd done and that I hadn't broken anything. AI Assistant needed a bit of work. I think it was less efficient in doing it myself, especially as I had to point it in the direction of other things that needed doing, but it did work. Although what on earth that messing around with Java at the beginning was, I really don't know. I remain optimistic that AI will end up making us more efficient, removing drudgery rather than our whole jobs. But at the moment, if I know how to do a thing, it's almost certainly quicker for me to do it myself rather than try and persuade an AI to do it for me. It's good to be back in the Gilded Rose code base though. There's a little bit more tidying up to be done, and then I think we can go with Throttle Up to develop some new features. If you'd like to see those features developed, then please subscribe to the channel. Like this video to encourage me to show you more of humans programming and less AI. And don't forget to buy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.